In September of 1952, the 1st Battalion, the Duke of Wellington's regiment, left its garrison in West Germany and set sail for South Korea, where it was in March joined the 1st Commonwealth Division. Since June of 1950, South Korea, supported by 21 other nations, including Britain, had been embroiled in a war against North Korea and the People's Republic of China. Although the war has started out very fluid, by 1952 the front line had become static, with conditions resembling those experienced during the First World War only 40 years earlier. It was against this backdrop that the first Duke of Wellingtons arrived on the Korean Peninsula in October of 1952, with the battalion disembarking at Pusan in South Korea, and thence making its way north to the sector of the front line held by the 1st Commonwealth Division. Describing the initial experience of the 1st Battalion in Korea, the Duke of Wellington's Regimental Association states that The harsh Korean winter descended over the country, which made patrolling uncomfortable and difficult. The first casualty was suffered on the 20th of December, when Private Robert Kirkpatrick died of wounds. There was much more action in this sector, with fighting patrols clashing in no man's land at night, and a major raid to destroy a Chinese tunnel was conducted on the 24th of January 1953. A week after the raid on the Chinese tunnel, the Wellingtons, along with the rest of the division, was withdrawn for a period of rest and reorganisation, and it wasn't until April of 1953 that the 1st Commonwealth Division returned to the sector of the front line it had previously held with the 1st Duke of Wellington's assuming responsibility for the division's left flank on the 13th of May. Shortly after arriving in this area, the battalion began to observe heavy Chinese vehicle movement to the north, whilst over the next few days, the frequency of Chinese probing attacks and artillery barrages steadily increased, particularly against a piece of high ground known as the Hook. Located in the centre of the battalion's front, the Hook had an elevation of around 200 metres, and dominated the Samachon Valley, one of the few approaches in the area that led to the South Korean capital of Seoul. Given the importance of the hook, the Chinese had tried twice in the autumn of 1952 to gain its possession, but on both occasions they had been driven back with heavy casualties. Nonetheless, the Chinese regrouped throughout early 1953 and began preparing for a third offensive, and the increase in activity experienced by the 1st Duke of Wellingtons in mid-May was the start of the build-up for this attack. The history of the 1st Commonwealth Division notes that During the period 18th to 29th of May, it became apparent that the enemy was building up his strength in front of the Wellingtons, and a Chinese deserter, who surrendered on the 18th, stated that an early attack on the Hook was planned. By the 27th, there were signs that the expected attack on the Hook was imminent, and that it would be on a bigger scale than any which had taken place for some time. The Chinese offensive commenced in the evening of the 28th of May 1953 and was opened with one of the heaviest artillery bombardments of the Korean War. Following up behind the artillery came the first wave of Chinese infantry, who departed their start line at around 1950 and very quickly were able to scale the ridge line and get in and amongst the British positions on top of the hook. Holding the hook at the time was D Company of the 1st Duke of Wellington's whose defences on top of the feature had been decimated as a result of the opening bombardment. In spite of this, the men of D Company fought tenaciously to hold their ground, including Private Dennis' husband, who single-handedly held off three Chinese attacks against the bunker he and the rest of his section were manning. His actions not only inflicted heavy casualties on the enemy, but also saved his section from being overrun, and because of this, Private Dennis' husband was awarded the military medal. Meanwhile, at around 2025, and after repeated requests for support from D Company, the combined weight of fire of the artillery assigned to the 1st Commonwealth Division and the American 1st Corps began to be laid down onto the hook. Assigned to the 20th Field Regiment Royal Artillery at the time was 2nd Lieutenant Brian Parrott, who later recalled. From a gunner's point of view, it was wonderful. It was a constant bang, bang, bang. Baker 4 fired over 600 rounds during the battle. 
The gun barrel became red hot, and the Royal Army's Service Corps were splendid in bringing up more ammunition. Although falling directly onto the British positions, this Allied artillery barrage had an immediate effect in that it completely halted the Chinese advance, thus momentarily relieving D Company of significant pressure. However, just 20 minutes later, at 2045, a second wave of enemy infantry was spotted advancing on the hook from the northeast. Like before, the numerically superior Chinese force was able to gain a small foothold on top of the feature, from where desperate close quarter fighting, including hand to hand, developed once more. With D Company at risk of being pushed off the ridge line, a platoon from B Company was dispatched to the hook to reinforce the defences whilst Allied artillery laid down a second barrage, which once again succeeded in breaking up the enemy attack. Having failed twice to drive D Company from the hook, the Chinese regrouped and changed the direction of their advance onto the left flank of the Duke of Wellingtons. Here lied another important feature known as Point 121, which was being held by B Company. Getting underway at 2200 on the 28th of May, this new attack not only hit B Company's defences, but also positions held by Turkish troops of the American 25th Infantry Division. Caught in a hail of Allied small arms, machine gun, artillery and tank fire, the Chinese were unable to make any gains on this flank and were very quickly driven back. An hour later, the Chinese again switched the focus of their offensive onto another part of the British line, this time against positions held by the 1st Battalion, the King's Regiment, who were on the right of the Wellingtons. The history of the 1st Commonwealth Division details the fate of this 4th attack. Enemy shelling increased against A Company or the 1st Kings. In the light of searchlights, large numbers of Chinese were seen forming up to attack and were dispersed by artillery fire. Later, it was discovered that this attack was in battalion strength and that the enemy suffered very heavy casualties. The Chinese launched a fifth and final attempt to secure the hook in the early morning hours of the 29th of May 1953, but, like those before it, it failed to make any progress and was swiftly beaten off thanks in large part to Allied artillery. Thereafter, the 1st Battalion, the Duke of Wellington's regiment, regrouped and reorganised before orders were finally issued at 0240 on the 29th of May for D Company to sweep forward and regain complete control over the hook. With support from the Centaurian tanks of C Squadron, the 1st Royal Tank Regiment, D Company successfully carried out the task assigned to it, and by 0430 on the 29th of May 1953, the hook had been cleared of Chinese infantry, marking the end of the Chinese offensive. Over the course of the 10-hour battle for the hook, the Chinese forces had suffered heavy casualties. Exact figures and the number of men they lost is impossible to determine, although an estimate published by the 1st Commonwealth Division puts the casualty figure at 250 killed and a further 800 wounded in action. In contrast, the 1st Battalion, the Duke of Wellington's regiment, sustained 126 casualties in its fight to hold the hook, of which 20 were sadly killed in action. A further 22 casualties were suffered by other units of the Commonwealth Division that were involved in the defence of the hook. Undoubtedly, the support provided by Allied artillery decisively influenced the course of the battle, and it was later estimated that no less than 38,000 artillery rounds had been fired in support of the 1st Battalion, the Duke of Wellington's regiment. On top of this, approximately 10,000 mortar rounds, 540 tank rounds, and 500,000 small arms and machine gun rounds were fired by the British over the duration of the battle. In concluding the Third Battle of the Hook, the history of the 1st Commonwealth Division states, Thus ended the Battle of the Hook, the last sizable engagement fought by the Commonwealth Division in the Korean War. Nevertheless, the next two months saw bitter fighting along the whole United Nations front, which increased in severity as the date for the armistice approached. <laughs>